the structure of the iris flower is more complex than in some flowers, but it doesn't approach that of the orchid. There are a total of six petals, three up standards, three down falls. The inside of the flower has what are called three style arms. On the fall petals, in at least the garden varieties, there is what's called a beard. And here you can see it's a much darker color, but it's still in that pink um, lycopene keratin family of pigments. Reproduction of the flower involves a bee following this in and here underneath is the anther with pollen on it. As the bee gets nectar, that pollen is rubbed on its back. The next flower it goes to, it fertilizes. This little lip is the stigma that pollen is placed on. So when the bee with pollen on its back goes into the next flower, it rubs that pollen on this stigma. The pollen germinates, sends down, and fertilizes down here in the ovary that becomes a seed pod. One of the reasons there are so many different iris varieties, colors, and patterns is that literally hundreds of backyard gardeners and enthusiasts will breed irises just as I showed, plant the seeds, and if they get a new and different flower with somewhat different characteristics, they can introduce it commercially and sell it. There's a way of registering names internationally, so two different varieties don't get the same name. But it gives rise to huge numbers of variant flowers, patterns, width, structure, just a plethora of interesting garden plants. Why am I interested in irises? Pure happenstance. I started raising some actually when I was in the seventh and eighth grade and neighbors gave me some plants with different colored flowers. I was fascinated and I wondered what would happen if I crossed a yellow iris with a blue iris, would I get a green iris? And so I started going to the library and found out that how to study those was called genetics. And that's what led me into genetics. So I became a geneticist and continued to study irises largely as a hobby. There is a tradition, uh, E.B. Sturdivant at Caltech um, was an iris breeder. His expertise was Drosophila genetics, one of the pioneers of modern genetics. Fitz Randolph, a corn breeder at Cornell, was also interested in iris genetics and wrote chapters and books involving iris genetics. So there's a tradition of academics being interested in this. In part, it appeals to aesthetics at two levels. Fascinating flowers, but also complex genetics that's an intellectual challenge.